How's it, how's it? David Goldblatt's exceptional documentary photography perfectly captured the crazy contradictions of life in South Africa under apartheid. His photography is a lesson to us all that sometimes the most unassuming images can be the most powerful. Thank you for joining me here today on The Photographic Eye as we look at the life and work of David Goldblatt. Goldblatt was born in a town called Ranfontein, which is a mining town on the outskirts of Johannesburg. And he spent his early life photographing the changing face of South Africa, and this carried through until his death in 2018. He published many books of photography over the years, though to my mind, there are two of them that are worth looking at, On the Mines and In Boxburg. South Africa is a land of stark contrasts, and especially socially, and when looking at photography, and documentary photography in particular, I think it's always useful to be able to see the images in, in some sort of context. And while these two books are separated by about sort of six years in, in real life, they perfectly illustrate a duality that exists both in David's photography and, and in South Africa. By looking at these two books in conjunction, we're going to get a better understanding of how great social photographers don't really think in terms of more like a singular image, but more of a kind of like an overriding narrative. To give you a brief background, you know, Johannesburg is a city that exists solely because of the immense gold fields on, on, on which it sits. You know, in, in South Africa um, from the 1940s, it was ruled by a, a party called the National Party, whose policy of apartheid forced segregation and third-class citizenship status on its black inhabitants. The lifeblood of Johannesburg, the, these mines, they were built on the back of what was then called so native labor. And, and because of David's commercial work on the mines, he was able to access places that would otherwise have been off limits. And we get a real insight into the, the world of the, the working you know, the mine workers, and that's where the basis comes from for On the Mines. The second book, released a few years later, is called In Boxburg. Now, Boxburg is, or was then, an exclusively white suburb on the eastern side of Johannesburg. You know, so generic and, and fairly unassuming and nondescript, it was, it was extremely typical of the types of suburbs at the time that were popping up around the mines. David's commercial work was mostly in colour, and all of the work which he considered to be his, his personal work was created in, in black and white. And, and Goldblatt observed that his use of color during the apartheid would, would have been what he felt was, was inappropriate. You know, he claimed that it would have enhanced the beauty and, and the personalities, whereas for him, black and white photography and, and more effectively documented the dramatic contradictions that sort of defined this period for, for David. Goldblatt had said that if a photograph serves a certain idea, even, you know, even if it's a good idea, the idea always seems to take precedence and then the photography contains a judgment and, and, and he's decided, decided to record the facts and leave these judgments to the viewers. And this is what I think makes David's work, for me, it, it's, it's, it's hallmark, is this quietness and, and the fact that, that he doesn't sort of contrive events to, to, to force us into a way of viewing things. What I find really intriguing about these two bodies of work is that in On the Minds, there's an almost double Eugene Smith approach to, to the photography of this heavily industrialized process, which is somewhat reminiscent of the work, uh, again, a personal project that, that Smith did in, in Pittsburgh with the steel workers. And there's a lot of similarities between the two. And one of the things I find especially striking when it comes to similarities is that how in both cases, the photographer has managed to make the industrial process seem almost organic in, in a way. And, and you, we see this most, most obviously in the images where, where David went down the mine shafts uh, with the shaft sinkers. Now, these, these are men who are working thousands of meters beneath the ground, you know, digging holes deeper and deeper and deeper looking, looking for gold. And, and of course, down there, it's extremely dark, it's extremely hot. And, and, and that's all reflected in the photographs. And, and you see this in this gritty, you know, way, because the film has been pushed to its absolute limits and, and slow shutter speed. So you get all this blurring and, and everything just sort of comes together to combine this almost abstract image of, of, of almost like, like kind of, you know, a hellscape. 
that that is is populated by people who are working for you know for almost a non-existent wage for for a government that barely considers them to be citizens and then of course you combine this with the idea that that almost literally above their heads there exists this world this this white society where where these people who are who are forging this existence are, are, are extremely not welcome you know, in sight of the, the very mind dumps that these miners are helping to create is, is the surreal world that, docu that David has documented. You know, and, and the images in, in, in Boxburg have a very different feel to them. You know, they are, they're banal, they're mundane, and, and they're just every day. And, and while there are some, obviously, some black people sort of featured, the focus really is on this sort of bizarre normality that just kind of existed at the time. And, and, I, and I believe a lesser skilled photographer would probably be tempted to create caricatures of, of these white Afrikaners, um, you know, and, and to make them look evil and, and, and be pantomime villains, but, but David didn't. Of course, because of this, 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 this non-caricature way of, of photographing people, uh, Goldblatt was accused of being dispassionate in his portraits, and, and, and certainly, you know, some of his contemporaries were a lot more forceful in their images protesting apartheid. But, but in the case of David's photography, you know, by photographing events as he found them, his quiet, unassuming photographs hold, hold so much more power. You know, this, this is what David himself had to, had to say about this. You know, I, I was asking myself how it was possible to be so apparently normal, moral and upright, which almost all these citizens were, in such an appallingly abnormal immoral, bizarre situation. I hoped we would be able to see ourselves revealed by a mirror held up to ourselves. I feel if both of these subjects, you know, the, 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 the Boxburg suburb and, and the mines had both been photographed in the same style, it would lose this kind of impact of, of contrast. And, and of course, the books are not supposed to be seen as a pair. You know, they, they, they are complete separate works. But when you take the two of them together, it's a perfect illustration of how we can introduce into you know, photography a greater sense of depth by understanding how images work together. And when you see echoes and sentiments revisited between these images, it helps us get a lot more from the photographs and, and, and certainly improves on our reading and, and, and understanding of, of what's going on in, in the wider sense. Goldblatt's photography from this period serves as a stark reminder of how easily, you know, we can blink ourselves to the reality that surrounds us. You know, they're not really, with, with some exceptions, you know, beautiful photographs, but they are photographs that pose questions, you know, documenting a world that, that no longer exists, but whose shadows are still evident across the land. Once apartheid was dismantled in the early 90s and, and Mandela was voted president of the New Democratic South Africa in 1994, David decided to introduce color into his photography work and, and he worked up until his death in 2018, creating beautifully quiet photographs of the changing face of South Africa. If you take one thing away from these two books, it is that you don't need to shout in your photography, I think, to make yourself heard. You know, so often the strongest words are the softest spoken. Thanks again for joining me here today on The Photographic Eye, and I hope that you found this brief look at David Goldblatt's photography interesting, and that you were encouraged to go off and discover more of this fascinating photographer. This video is part of a series that I've created to give you an introduction to the greats of photography. If you'd like to see more of these videos, which I'm going to release every Friday, please do hit the subscribe button to below to make sure that you're notified when a new episode is released. Thanks ever again so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon.